In today's video, I'll demonstrate how to move a virtual machine between two standalone ESXi hosts without using vCenter. This is our lab setup for today. I have two standalone ESXi hosts. ESXi host 1 contains a virtual machine, which we'll move to ESXi host 2. Host 2 currently has no virtual machines. Let's start by logging into ESXi Host 1, our source host. As you can see, it's running a Windows Server virtual machine. If we check the data store configuration, the VM's files are stored on the DS1 data store. Using the data store browser, we can locate the folder named after the virtual machine. This folder contains all the VM's files, including the .vmx, vmdk, and flat.vmdk files. However, the flat.vmdk file isn't visible. Both vmdk and flat.vmdk files are displayed as a single vmdk file in web interface. We can verify it, we'll enable SSH on ESXi host 1 and connect using PuTTY. Navigating to the VM's folder. We can now clearly see all three files, VMX, VMDK, and flat.vmdk. Before downloading, we need to power off the virtual machine. Once it's powered off, you need to download the VMX, VMDK, and flat.vmdk files to your local computer. You can use the web interface for this, but I'll use WinSCP as an alternative method to download the required files. Open WinSCP and navigate to VMFS, then Volumes, then the DS1 data store, and finally the VM folder. I've created a folder on my local desktop named gto underscore svr copy to store these files. Keep in mind that the flat.vmdk file is a thick file, which means it is as large as the virtual disk size. In this case, the size is 50 GB. Next, I'll copy the .vmx, vmdk, and flat.vmdk files into the folder we've created on the local computer. If the VM has multiple disks, you'll need to repeat this process for each disk. Wait until the download is complete. You can now see that three files have been downloaded to the local computer. Now, Let's upload the files to ESXi Host 2, our destination host. Logging to ESXi 2. I'll create a new folder in the DS2 data store for these files. You can use the web interface to upload the files to the data store. Or alternatively, we can use WinSCP to upload them. Wait for the upload to complete. Once the upload is complete, we'll log into ESXi Host 2 and verify that all three files are in the folder. Remember, in the web interface, the flat.vmdk file and vmdk file appear as one. Then logging to ESXi Host using PuTTY. 
flat.vmdk file is thick file. Next, we need to convert the flat.vmdk file from thick to thin provisioning. Use this command to start the conversion process. It will take some time to complete. Once complete, you'll see new thin provisioned vmdk and flat.vmdk files in the folder. We now need to rename the thick provisioned files to avoid conflicts. I will rename thick provisions file as gto underscore svr1 thick. Use this command to rename file. The command will rename both vmdk and flat.vmdk files. Then again rename the thin provision files to match the name of VM's VMX file. This name will be GTO underscore SVR1. This ensures consistency with the VM inventory. Finally, you can see one VMX file, two thick provisioned VMDK and flat.VMDK files and two thin provisioned VMDK and flat.VMDK files. Finally, we'll register the VM in ESXi Host 2's inventory. This is a thick provision file, and we can delete this file if you want. Right-click the .VMX file and select, Register VM. After registration, power on the VM. When prompted, select, I copied it. The VM is now running on the new host. That's how you move a virtual machine between two standalone ESXi hosts without vCenter. Thank you for watching.